step out in a little different area of faith. Just be willing to just go ahead and step out in that area of faith. Thank God. You know, every once in a while I hear, hear baby sounds out here. Thank God. I love to hear baby sounds. Praise God. Of course, I know sometimes it can be too loud, but, but you know, baby sounds is a wonderful thing because that means that the church is growing. Thank God. We've got two ways to grow. You can win them or you can birth them. Thank God. If you don't want to birth one, you need to win one. Praise God or do both. Praise God. That's all right, too. So we're excited about um, Sister Angeline, Brother Adam, uh, guaranteeing church growth. Praise God. You know, there are some guaranteed church growth. So let's, let's just turn to the word of the Lord for a moment here today and believe God's going to speak a special word to someone today. I feel very confident today that this message can change somebody's life. Praise God. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Thank God. Jesus was saying, Don't get time and eternity mixed up. Thank God. Don't get material things and eternal things mixed up. Thank God. Because he goes on to show us what can happen. I want to preach today from this thought, borns like the borns you put animals in, and retirement. Borns and retirement. Thank God. God, I pray that you'll help us today. I want to wake us up. I want to stir us up. I want to remind us, Lord, that this is really about eternity. It's not about the here and the now. In some way, awake us to that, and we plead your blood, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Thank God. Shake hands with somebody. Tell them I'm glad you're sitting by me today. Praise God. Thank God. You may be seated. And... And Jesus, after he gave that um, thing about uh, beware of covetousness because life consists not of the abundance of the things that we possess, then he gave this parable, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The grounds of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room wherein to bestow my goods. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and I will build greater, and there will I bestow all of my fruits and goods. And I will say unto my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul is required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? So... Is he that layeth up his treasures, tre layeth up his treasures, layeth up treasures for himself, and is not rich towards God. And so is he that layeth up treasures for himself, but is not rich towards God. So I want to preach from this thought today, borns and retirement. Notice all the mistakes that this man made. You know, first he thought within himself, and he figured he was the final authority, and he said, what shall I do? And I'm going to I don't have room, and so I'm going to tear down my barn so that I can store up all my fruit. And, and notice he says, and then I'm going to say to my soul, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Thank God. He had it all out of sorts. Thank God. He was uh, planning a tomorrow. Thank God. And he also, uh, he was all about, uh, you know, his newborns and his retirement plan that he was working on. And but the tragedy is tomorrow never comes. It's so easy to be living for tomorrow, uh, but, but we don't really have tomorrow. All we have is today. And this man made all of the mistake of mistaking time for eternity, mistaking his body for his soul, he made a lot of preparations for time, made a lot of preparations for this body, but he made no preparations for eternity, he made no preparations for his soul, and therefore uh, he died a pauper because we're going to take nothing with us. But tomorrow's never come. It is never tomorrow. It's always today. Thank God. You'll never live a tomorrow. You'll only live a today. And so you just have to understand, this man was living for a tomorrow that never come. The truth is, is someone else will build those newborns. Someone else will enjoy all the things that he had accumulated. Someone else will have uh, to uh, sit back and say, look how good everything is going, and then someone else will die, and someone else will take those things and continue the process because we brought nothing into this world, 
and we're going to take nothing out of this world. And so the truth is, is that we need to understand that this life is short and we need to uh, use it wisely because someday we have to give an account for the way that we've lived in this life. This parable was intended to remind us that um, eternity and time, eternity is long and time is short. Thank God. And we live, if we live at the best nowadays, um, people are thinking 100 years, you know, it's possible. Um, and that could be for better or for worse. I mean, you know, I don't want to live 100 years if I'm just uh, miserable, you know. But anyway, that's possible nowadays. But, you know, the Bible gives us 70 years, thank God. And if first chance you have 80 or 90, thank God, or even 100, thank God. What is that when you think about eternity? I mean, so when we realize how fastly time passes away, but there is no guarantee that we will even live the 70. Praise God. Because life in a split second can be snapped into eternity, just like in Las Vegas a few days ago when all of those precious people were snapped out into eternity in just a few minutes. It was just unbelievable that such a tragedy could happen to innocent people that had no, in, no realization, no time to think about it, but eternity. Thank God it can happen driving down the highway when someone uh, veers over into your lane and instantly eternity. So we don't have any guarantees here today, but the best uh, when we think about it all is what about eternity? Because time is short. Thank God. James said it like this in 4 and 14, where as you know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. It's like a puff on a cold day that comes out of your mouth. That's in comparison to eternity. That's kind of what life is like. And so with that in mind, I have come to remind you that time is short. We need to use it wisely. You young families don't uh, uh, make all of the plans for your retirement. But take time to enjoy your family while they are growing up. Thank God. Save a little time and save a little uh, energy for your family. And it's okay to save a little money for the future. And it's the wise person that will save a little money for the future. But while you have your health, while you have your children where you can um, uh, tell them what to do, most of the time, some of the time, every once in a while you get to tell them what to do. But whatever your situation is with your child and ever have. But I'm telling you uh, from uh, zero to, uh, I would like to be able to say to 17 or 18, but I'm telling you, if you haven't done a good job from zero to five, thank God it's going to be rough when they get 17. Thank God. But if you'll do a good job when they zero to five, praise God, it'll be pretty smooth, thank God, until they get able to start making their own decisions. And then it's another who knows what, praise God. But all you can do is right now is the best time of your life as a family because you have the opportunity to do whatever you decide to do. And so take some time and make your family count now because there'll come a time when you wish you could do some things with your family, but uh, they, they'll be too busy for you. So, you know, just remember, you know, right, you know, you're the parent, thank God, and uh, they're the child. But, you know, someday if we do this right, um, they become the parent and you become the child, you know. There comes a point where that it, it all reverses, you know. And if it doesn't, of course, in our society, everybody's too busy. But they, you know, thank God for nursing homes or wherever else we might wind up at. But the truth is, is that right now is the best time of your life. Thank God. And right now is when you have the opportunity to do more. When we talk about uh, the Sermon on the Mountain, uh, we know that that was one of the greatest messages that was ever preached. But many people think that all the Sermon on the Mountain was was a beatitude. And that was a part of the Sermon on the Mountain, but there's a whole lot more to the Sermon on the Mountain than the Beatitudes. Like in chapter 6, he says this, uh, verse number 19, Lay not for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where the thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where the thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Somewhere you have to ask yourself, what is valuable to me? What is my real treasures? What do I really fight for? What do I really care about? Praise God. But this is what uh, Jesus said to do, and you get this right, 
Thank God you can get life right. Verse number 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These other, all these other things will be added unto you. Don't let uh, your own things become more important than God's things because somewhere, thank God, the things that become your treasures, life is going to pass away if we're not careful. But there are some eternal treasures that Jesus said, if you'll lay up some eternal treasures, thank God, and you'll seek first the kingdom of God, everything else is going to take care of itself. What Jesus was saying, if you will make his kingdom first, thank God, I will take care of everything else in your life. Then uh, you look at chapter 7 of the Sermon on the Mountain. It's still a part of that Sermon on the Mountain. And he went on to remind them about eternity in verse number 13. He says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, but, and many there be that find it. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Thank God. He, had us, he wanted us to know that if you're going where the crowd's going, you're not going to heaven. Praise God. Because heaven is going to be on the straight and the narrow way. And just a few are going to find it. God has never judged his situation on the majority. He's never judged his situation on numbers. Thank God. He would rather have a Noah and his children than he would to have a whole world that was um, backslid and cursing and, and doing all the things that sin had br brought about. And so just for eight souls, he was willing to uh, take them and make that his treasure. Thank God. God treasures that one that treasures him. Somewhere you have to treasure the things of God for him to treasure, for us to be treasured in heaven. And Jesus went on to say, and he gave us this piece of advice. Thank God we choose where, that we can choose where that we really build our, our hopes on and what we really build our, our eternal desire zone because he said uh, there will be some storms in verse number 25 and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat up on the house and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock thank God and he gave us uh, a picture thank God if you will choose to build on the rock the winds are going to come and the storms are going to come but your house will stand. Thank God. But he went on to say, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them uh, not, I shall liken unto him a, a foolish man that built his house upon the, the sands, and the rains descended, and the floods came. Thank God. And the fall of that house was great. Thank God. He's talking about uh, your, your life and where you are building your life at. What are you really putting all of your trust in? What are you really putting your hopes in so are you building on a rock or are you building on a sand are you really understanding that um storms are going to come that's just a part of life matter of fact we have been reminded again of how storms can come and just in a matter of a few hours can take away all of the material things that you have material things have no real value when um storm comes because it can just take away everything in just a few hours and so make sure that you are building uh, your life on some sure foundation because everything that can be shaken will be shaken and some of you are getting a real test of that shaking right now you're having to go through all of the stresses and the pressures and the um aggravations of trying to get your homes back together get your life back together and if you're not going through that, well, thank God that he spared you and that you can count it as a blessing that you're not having to do that. But for those of you that are going through that, thank God. So don't let uh, it consume you, thank God, and get you down. Thank God, it's time. It will all come back together and everything will get back to some type of normal again. Praise God. But you, you need to remember, Jesus said, thank God, just make me the cornerstone of your life. If you will build on the rock. Thank God. All of these other things will take care of themselves. It's only uh, seems like a, a short time ago that uh, at 28 years of age, I came here to become the pastor of this church. Thank God. And now at 73, it's hard to believe that 45 years have um, pleaded or passed away or have come and gone. Praise God. But the beautiful thing is, is just to see what God could do with so little, thank God that he has done so much, thank God, it's with joy I can look and be amazed at what God has done. I'm just excited to know, God, if you did this with 
of that little bit of effort. No telling what you're fixing to do for the future of the church because the future of the church is bright because I realize that once we get everything back together, thank God, we're going to have a great harvest that God has promised the church and he has given us those to come alongside and everyone here today that is committed to the, the betterment of the kingdom of God and, and we're gaining a unity that will give victory to the church in a way that nothing else can give like unity can. Unity is the most wonderful thing that we can have. Thank God, if we will pay the price, I believe that God will open up the windows of heaven as never before. So this is an exciting time to be a part of the church. I'm glad I'm a part of the church. This is a wonderful day that we're looking forward to. Thank God, I am thankful that I'm not looking backwards, but I'm looking forward. I see something beautiful in the future. But I do, I am thankful that I can encourage myself. Like Peter said, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. I can remember all of the wonderful victories that we have already had. And so with confidence, I can say there's going to be greater victories than this. Thank God, it's no time to be, um, you know, building uh, Borns for this world. Thank God, it's time to start laying up some treasures in heaven. It's time to be doing the work of God that will, where moth and rust and thieves cannot break through and steal. Thank God, it's been said the, the best time to plant a tree is 25 years ago. Praise God. But the second best time to plant a tree is today. Thank God. They say that for an a, a oak tree to produce an acorn, it has to be 60 years old before it ever produces an acorn. Thank God. And some of you that have oak trees and you've ever been around them, uh, when they start producing acorns, they really produce acorns. So, praise God. It takes them 60 years to do it. But when they start producing them, you know about it. It's about like a pine tree and all of the, the needles. That If you have a pine tree today, you know what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Thank God you'll be raking pine straw because that's just the way that it is. But the truth is, is that it takes a while for a tree to get that place. Thank God. And that goes for the kingdom of God. The best time to start living for God, the best time to start working for God was 25 years ago. Thank God. But the second best time to start living for God is today. Praise God. And so today is a beautiful day because it can be the beginning of the rest of your life. The best time to get saved, thank God, was 25 years ago. But Today is the second best time to get saved. While we're standing, thank God, last night, as I was finishing up this message at 10.52, I looked over at the clock, and I realized that I had prepared this message. But something inside said, you know, it's a message. But some way, I would like to just stop, thank God, and pray. God, let this message be for someone that's sitting there today. Let it be for someone to begin their walk with God. Let it be for someone to make a fresh commitment to do what they know that God wants them to do. Let it be for someone that really would just realize that I just want to really get sold out to God. I really understand that I'm alive and I'm breathing today. Maybe I missed yesterday's opportunity. But the beautiful thing is, is I have today. Thank God. I have today's opportunity. I can't do anything about yesterday. Whatever is behind is behind. And whatever the enemy tries to defeat you with from yesterday, you need to let him know that uh, that was yesterday. Right. But today, thank God, I will arise. And today I will make a difference. Because all oh, that we could just sell out to God and give it all that we've got. Just give him our very best sacrifice. God doesn't expect us to quit living. Thank God. He understands life is to go on. He wants you to have life, and he wants you to have it more abundantly. So he's not telling you to quit living and to quit doing. But what he is saying is you just give me your best effort. If you'll just remember, thank God, wake up every day and say, what can I do for God today? How could God use my life today? I'm telling you, a little commitment, a little reaching a little reminding ourselves that I want to have some eternal treasures. I don't want all my treasures to be in this life. I don't want to get consumed with the treasures for now. I really want to have some treasures in eternity. And they're the greatest treasure, thank God, that you can have is to know that you had a part in an eternal soul being saved. Praise God. Your soul is the most valuable thing you have. 
And the second most valuable thing you have is your loved ones and your friends and your neighbors. Thank God. And whosoever will, their souls being saved, worth more than all the world. I wonder today if there's some of us that maybe, you know, I know we all have things that we get on our mind and things that we can't control and, and pressures of life that come. But sometimes it just does us good to make it down to an altar and, and remind ourselves, God, thank God. if you're not saved today, you need to make your way to the altar and say, God, I want to get saved.